सद्गमय तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय ओ शाते 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 टुडे इज इज द कंक्लूडिंग सेशन एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एसेंस ऑफ द भगवद गीता लास्ट क्लास आई हैड टू इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चंस आफ्टर द लास्ट सेशन वन वॉज विच भगवद गीता शुड वी स्टडी फॉर दैट लेट मी जस्ट मैंशन टू बुक्स हियर वन इज यू कैन टेक अस द स्मॉल वॉल्यूम भगवद गीता बाई स्वामी स्वरूपानंदा रामकृष्ण मठ पब्लिकेशन इट्स वेरी कंसाइज नॉट वेरी बिग बुक एंड वेरी गुड ट्रांसलेशन इन टू इंग्लिश and the other one is uh, if you have the time uh, it's in three volumes universal message of bhagavad gita by swami ranganath ananda exposition of gita in the light of modern thoughts and modern needs this is a remarkable book it's in three volumes so in your holidays or something like that you can go through it the second question which i uh, received last time was uh, very interesting somebody asked me how exactly karma leads to purification of mind we keep saying karma yog bahut necessary hai because it clears the path to whatever you want to attain how exactly does this happen so you see uh, at one point we had discussed from where does the human will arise karma has to do with work has to do with exercise of your will isn't it hmm? it's an expression of your volition from where does that volition arise it arises from the vigyan may kosh the higher intellect so to say because the will is a compound between consciousness and the intellect so because it arises from there as you keep exercising that will in the right direction the vigyan may kosh remains active as it were you understand you are not just body conscious not just mind conscious you are working from a higher plane it ushers you into the vigyan may kosh as it were karma yoga hmm? if you are working consciously in a specific manner in a directed manner with will withdrawn from personal gains the vigyan may kosh will remain active so you are very close to the truth of your true being this is how karma yoga actually churns and cleans up the mind and helps you attain the higher goals of life so you must understand how it it's all uh, it's a sort of graded path that is why which is given to you in order to attain whatever you want to attain in life now one more thing which you should know is uh, before i go into the essence of bhagavad gita see when we talk of consciousness many times i have told you this you are essentially consciousness functioning through a body mind complex so you can say this consciousness factor it is the static aspect of the self but the will becomes the dynamic aspect of the self isn't it because will you are exercising you, you are actually your will when you exercise it otherwise you are of the nature of pure consciousness so your own static and dynamic aspects are being described hmm, as pure consciousness and as will this is one thing you should know another thing is as you go on exercising your will in the right direction you develop your effective faculty so you are developing all your faculties your intellect your effective faculty and your volitional faculty when all these faculties you know these are the three basic faculties of the human being thinking feeling and willing isn't it your own basic faculties when all these three work in harmony they work in sync then yoga becomes possible transcending body mind complex which is the goal of all sadhana it becomes possible when your three basic faculties are working in sync so this is how karma yoga helps you naturally evolve towards higher realization try it and see in your own system the entire experimentation is here you see try it and see if you work in a particular way with a particular attitude and a work which is oriented towards doing good to others with a detached will 
it will create a particular ambience right within you. It will usher you into the state of yoga. Today when we go into the essence of Bhagavad Gita, the art of concentration, there I will uh, give you a short meditation also. Mm, because medit as you meditate, karma yoga becomes easier. You know they sort of complement each other. None of these yogas is a compartment in itself. Because we have all of these faculties, we sort of combine, harmonize all the yogas. Jab aap karma karte ho, you should try to make it into karma yoga. When you are full of emotion, you must try bhakti yoga. When you are full of your rational faculty, just thinking, you must try jnana yoga. These are all your own faculties. So you can apply any yoga actually. If you make a higher goal uh, basic to your life, the purpose of your life, then naturally whatever you do, you will want to convert it into a yoga. So you have a choice of all of these and you can harmonize them. In fact, harmony of yogas is very important. It is not that a karma yogi is just a karma yogi. It is not like that, is not it? Uh, many times we discuss this, that he is doing his duty out of love. That is when you will enjoy doing your duty. So the effective aspect is there. So in a way you must try to harmonize all your faculties so as to achieve transcendence, what we, we are calling transcendence which means the higher realization. So Gita ka yahi upadesh hai. Yes? Yes. Also, yes. You you said that we should detach. The, yes. Uh, you you sh we should detach our whatever it is from the result or from the will or yes. We should work with detachment. Hmm. So how do we do that? Yes. You see that comes only by practice. Even what exactly it means detaching the will. Nobody does purposeless work, isn't it? Everybody when you work, it's purposeful work. What they are telling you is, you do purposeful work, but you do selfless work. The detachment of the will means, the effect of the work is not just for my ego. As you grow up, you will see there are many people who are in a sense working for their egos mainly. Such people flop as leaders. If you are working, the purpose of your work is generating good in your workplace for others. Which means actually in your workplace what will happen? The employer employee relationship gets very refined by such an attitude, isn't it? So you become a natural leader, you are boosted up as a leader. A personalized will will not take you very far. That's why last time I gave you the equation success is equal to hard work minus a personalized will. You have to depersonalize your will, which means what? The entire life force is dedicated to bringing good to others, to the people around you. And as a result, you become the natural leader. As you work with uh, people, you will see this is pretty obvious. Team spirit ka matlabi hai ye. Organized work ka matlabi hai aise hona. Creating a will which is naturally, it, it has motivation only towards others. A socially oriented will that ensures your success. This is what I mean. Now, uh, let us go into one more thing which I would like to mention here. You remember, uh, I had shown you this uh, particular slide in the first session. Mm. Now, just pay your attention to this slide. See, this is basically Sankhya psychology, which tells you reality is twofold, Purusha and Prakriti. And everything that you are working through, the instrumentation of your body, mind, everything about the mind, these are all evolutes of Prakriti. Karma Yoga fits very well into this kind of a dual framework. Sankhya and Yoga are both dual philosophies. They believe reality is twofold, Purusha and Prakriti. But please see, Purusha is separate from Prakriti. Hmm? And everything falls under the realm of Prakriti. So what Karma Yoga is advising you is, now this is our present state. We know we are, it is through, through your body and mind that you function. But in a way you can intuit that you are not just body and mind, they are like instruments through which you are functioning. So then how do I utilize these um, evolutes in order to augment my evolution? This is what Karma Yoga is about, isn't it? So thinking deeply itself will help you understand that indeed the real self, the real me is separate from Prakriti. Enquiry bolte hai isko. 
वेदांत विचार बोलते हैं इसको थ्रू इंक्वायरी यू कैन फाइंड आउट दैट द रियल आई कैनॉट बी ऑल दिस चेंजिंग एवल्यूट्स इन फैक्ट वेदांता डजेंट इवन गिव ऑन्टोलॉजिकल प्राइमसी टू मेंटेलिटी टू माइंड एक्शन बिकॉज दैट इज ऑल्सो चेंजिंग यू सी ऑल दिस अहंकार द फाइव कॉग्नेटिव सेंसेस कर्मेंद्रियाज ज्ञानेन्द्रियाज माइंड विथ ऑल इट्स फैकल्टीज एवरीथिंग फॉल्स अंडर प्रकृति नाउ द कर्मयोग इज द आर्ट ऑफ using these faculties using prakriti in order to go to the realization of the purusha if just through enquiry you get it wonderful but if you don't get it by that you must have the maturity to work your way out isn't it and that is what karma yoga is about so it's the art of working in such a way you understand the truth about yourself yahi maqsad hai na the goal is self realization and this is you can use karma as a very powerful means towards that that is why you know in the bhagavad gita it is said guna guneshu vartant uh, the actual uh, shloka is prakriter guna sammudha sajjante guna karmasu which means deluded by the gunas of prakriti people attach themselves to the functions of the gunas prakriti has all these gunas through which it is functioning through your body mind mechanism we attach ourselves to all these functions we feel we are the doer of the action but just think of your own physiological activity are you uh, directing your heart to pump blood is the heart beating with your permission tell me or is the blood flowing with your permission not at all it's going on by itself in fact if medical science didn't tell you these are your organs and this is the work they are doing you wouldn't even know है ना इसका मतलब क्या है प्रकृति वर्क ऑफ नेचर इज गोइंग ऑन द बेसिक थिंग अबाउट यू इज ओनली सेल्फ अवेयरनेस बट यू आर यूजिंग द इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन ऑफ दिस बॉडी एंड माइंड टू मैनिफेस्ट दैट सेल्फ अवेयरनेस है ना यही सच है ना इसका मतलब थिंक अ लिटल एंड यू विल गेट द पॉइंट सो वॉट इज कर्म योग ट्राइंग टू टेल यू यू सो हैंडल प्रकृति नेचर you so train your system that you are able to get the knowledge of the self just through karma just through action hmm and they will really become your instruments very obedient instruments if you can train them in that manner so this is a constant refrain in the uh, bhagavad gita that prakriti is doing all the action not you so your sense of doership you must think about it a little a little deeply hmm अपने ऊपर ही रिसर्च है ये आप सोच के देखो एवरी थिंग ऑल द एवल्यूट्स ऑफ प्रकृति आर इन कॉन्स्टेंट फ्लक्स सो देन वॉट इज योर आइडेंटिटी अबाउट इफ इट वॉज जस्ट प्रकृति यू आर जस्ट अ कलेक्शन ऑफ चेंजिंग थिंग्स बट वेदांत अभी टेल यू नो यू आर एक्चुअली द पुरुषा फंक्शनिंग थ्रू द बॉडी माइंड कॉम्प्लेक्स सो इसके बारे में सोचो दिस इज ऑल आई वॉन्ट यू टू डू एट दिस मोमेंट ऑफ टाइम i will teach you very simple small meditation which will help you understand these things a little better kyunki maybe this is your first introduction to indian philosophy isn't it huh? these are this is a basic uh, sankhya psychology which we use in all systems of indian philosophical thought that's why i have put it here in karma yoga now what is it what is the message that bhagavad gita the essence of bhagavad gita we are going to discuss what is it trying to tell you again and again you see the basic uh, lamentation of arjun was i don't want to kill my people i don't want uh, the throne uh, i don't want to fulfill any ambition killing my own kith and kin and what is the advice being given to him the very first advice that was given to him is he uh, krishna raised his mind very high he took him straight to the level of self knowledge and told him who kills whom what is being killed ye bhi thoda soch ke dekho what is death if you are consciousness itself what does death mean is just fall of body isn't it huh? and krishna tells him that i have already slain all these people who need to be killed nimitta matra bhava savya sachin you just be the instrument now through the instrumentation of your body and mind prakriti will work the divine force will work and have its work done you just be the instrument and that is why he gives him self knowledge your own reality is neither that of the slayer nor the slain what does he say in second chapter 
the shlokas are very beautiful you must listen to a few of these shlokas because they are very powerful and the original sanskrit you must get acquainted with the words see he says nainam chindanti shastrani nainam dahati pavakah na chainam kledayantyapo na shoshayati marutah achhedyoyam adahyoyam akledyo ashoshya evacha nitya sarvagata sthanor achaloyam sanatana this is your real nature being described nainam chindanti shastrani weapons cannot cleave or cut the self which you truly are and fire cannot burn it water cannot wet it air cannot dry it it is not material substance isn't it it's consciousness none of these can touch it achhed yoyam it is uncleavable it cannot be cut by anything adah yoyam it cannot be burnt by fire and then it cannot be dissolved by water it cannot be blown or dried by air because it is nitya eternal sarvagata all pervading sthanu immovable achaloyam it is uh, constant ever present and sanatanah everlasting this is the nature of the soul which you truly are this is your definition so he raises his mind to that level gives him that experience that knowledge and then that is why the third chapter is karma yoga so go ahead and do your duty being an instrument in the hands of the divine so you see this is a message being given out to all of us kabhi kabhi aisa hota hai we are confused about our duty what should i do in this particular situation you must do what is right for you to do in that particular situation doesn't matter towards what and what kind of action that is this action which arjuna performed was actually for loka sangraha isn't it it was to bring peace to the world if duryodhana's reign in the world what will the world be like so the purpose of the divine incarnation is to show man his duty and that is why he says you just be the instrument in my hands and go ahead and do your duty so you see this is the eternal message of the bhagavad gita do your duty do your duty do your duty it doesn't matter what by doing your duty you worship the highest lord that is worship of god hmm? aap jis uh, aapki jo duty hai aapka jo uh according to your identifications i told you your duty is decided just now you are a student tomorrow you will be engineers you will be in very high leadership positions you will be in managerial duties you will be ceos of companies so at that time be absolutely devoted to your duty in any particular context this is what should strike you your duty is what you are going to carry further on with you hai na कर्म ही हमारे साथ जाता है और कुछ हमारे साथ जाएगा टेल मी सो एब्सोल्यूट कमिटमेंट टू ड्यूटी दिस इज वॉट इज बींग टोल्ड इन भगवद गीता अगेन एंड अगेन बट दैट ड्यूटी शुड बी परफॉर्म विद अ पर्टिकुलर स्टेट ऑफ माइंड इफ यू डू इट इन अ स्टेट ऑफ फ्रेंजी और एंगर और हेटरेड लोग कहते हैं विद पैशन यू मस्ट डू ड्यूटी बट द गीता विल टेल यू इन ट्रैंक्विलिटी यू मस्ट डू योर ड्यूटी द माइंड शुड बी ट्रैंक्विल there are many verses to this effect the mind should be in the state of yoga then the karma you do will become karma yoga you understand the mind should be trained in this lord krishna says let me give you this particular verse prasade sarva dukha nam hani rasyo pajayate prasanna chetaso hyashu buddhi paryavatishtate which means on attaining tranquility you not just put an end to your sorrow but the intellect of a tranquil man becomes very steady so you see your decision making faculty will become very correct it will correct itself it will become very steady if your mind is in a tranquil state just impulsively jumping into action that is not what is rec- recommended you get the point that is why tranquility equanimity of mind collectedness basically the, that is the very purpose of every yoga in any yoga this today you know you are trained and taught to be in an excitability mode hai na aap soch ke dekho that exhaust a lot of your energy if you want to tap your entire potential the mind should be calm and you must train it towards that so this training about this also the bhagavad gita is going to tell you and in in so many ways the 
what happens if this is not this training does not take place that is also told to you. You see this particular verse nasti buddhi rayuktasya nacha yuktasya bhavana nacha bhavayata shanti rashantasya kutasukham which means have you heard this verse this is also another very important verse it is telling you nasti buddhir ayuktasya a yukta a man who is in contact with the reality about himself he is called a yukta again and again the yukta is described in the bhagavad gita which means be in touch with your reality keep your mind in your heart and know that you are the self functioning through this body mind complex if you are in touch with this reality about yourself what will happen your intellect will blossom and nasti buddhir ayuktasya for an ayukta his intellect does not develop see very important idea they are giving you if you are in a particular state of yoga your higher intellect will just blossom nacha ayuktasya bhavana even your mind will not remain steady your bhavana will not remain steady if you are not a yukta today when i see young people suffering from depression inability to control mind going into drugs i really feel where are you losing if the mind cannot remain at peace you will not have happiness try what you may i told you last time about synthetic joys and original real joys based on your source so think about it and see and then he also gives the way to control the mind because you see arjun is putting questions exactly like us he he says um, chanchalam hi mana krishna pramathi balavadhridam dekhiye sabhi hamari avastha bhi yahi hai then he says tasya ham nigraham manye vayo riva sudushkaram iska matlab hai man hamesha chanchal rehta hai hai na chanchalam hi mana krishna pramathi very willful it is and balavadhridam it is very strong bahut drid hai and tasya ham nigraham controlling the mind appears to me vayo riva sudushkaram which means as difficult as it is to control the wind and then krishna advises him it is true asamshayam mahabaho manor dur nigraham chalam abhyasena tu kaunteya vairagena cha grihete it is no doubt true it is very difficult to control the mind but it can be done through abhyas and through vairagya abhyas ka matlab hai you practice again and again the mind running away you bring it back mind wandering away you bring it back you remember the brain is neuroplastic isn't it neuroplasticity i told you which means you are not hardwired for uh, restlessness and suffering as you go on putting the right habits the brain will change its structure it will change for the better you change your neural pathways through your habits so you can you are at the helm of change if you will rightly create the right habits in your life you can change anything so he says abhyas first thing second he says vairagya ka matlab hai see when we are moving towards a particular goal if there are unnecessary distractions which you actually don't want to experience but they impinge into your life you must show a little anger towards them you must show a little displeasure towards them this is called vairagya i to- i told you about incentive salience huh? you can keep liking something which you don't want it, it actually uh, sort of uh, takes away your energy these kind of unnecessary struggles in your life so if you show a certain amount of displeasure towards that object a certain amount of anger that is justified and if you move in that way you will move straight towards your goal so he is saying abhyasena tu kaunteya vairagena cha grihete by these two methods you can bring the mind under control then you know arjun puts another very uh, important question which we which is our problem also everyone's problem he says atha kena prayuktoyam papam charati purushah anichchan api vashnaya baladivan yojitah which means uh, impelled by what does a man commit sin he doesn't want to do it but as if forcefully he is being put into that ab dekhiye jo drug addicts hote hain alcohol addicts all these people if you ask them why you have gone into it they will say i didn't want to go something sort of my own mind forced me into it 
सो ये क्यों होता है बला दिव नियोजित एज इफ समथिंग इज फोर्सिंग यू इन टू दिस यू सी देन द रिप्लाई विच कृष्णा गिव्स यू नो ऑल बैड हैबिट्स आर लाइक दैट यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू गेट इन टू इट दे जस्ट कम एंड ओवर पवर यू सो वॉट इज द सोल्यूशन टू दिस अगेन इन द भगवद गीता कृष्णा इज टेलिंग अर्जुन योर बेसिक मोड्स ऑफ थिंकिंग आर नॉट राइट दैट्स वाई योर हैबिट्स हैव बिकम रॉन्ग सो यू आर डूइंग दिस यू सी ही सेज काम एश क्रोध एश रजो गुण समुद्भव महाशनो महापापमा विधेन मेह वैरिणम योर कल्चर टोल यू दिस ऑलवेज षड रिपु होते हैं मनुष्य के जीवन में काम क्रोध मद लोभ मोह मात्सर्य दिस विल पुल यू डाउन अनलेस यू रेजिस्ट एंड रिमेन स्ट्रांग Why does the mind behave like this? You don't want to do a particular thing; it's forcing you to do it, because you have given in to these lower impulses. So raise yourself by yourself. Udhare atmana atmanam na atmanam avasadayet. Don't give in to these lower impulses. You will see your your mind, your whole life will blossom towards the highest. Enormous energy will come into your being, and your will will function magically. It will just get you what you want to achieve. so understand all the enemies are right within us later on he is going to tell him trividham narakas yedam dwaram nashanam atmanah kama krodha tatha lobha tasmad etatrayam tejet no these repuls kama krodh lob to be your enemies here and they will take you into hell you will really have a hell of an experience if you don't check your lower uh, impulses so become aware yahi teaching diya ja raha hai yahan par you must so uh, train the human faculty is that you achieve the highest in life isn't it that you are able to achieve your higher goals in life so that all these things negativities in your life they don't derail you on the way so that is why this message is being given to you and then once you have got into this kind of a general purification the art of concentration is being taught in the 6th chapter you have such wonderful verses on concentration uh lord krishna tells advises arjuna how should you concentrate you see these two verses they are useful to you shanai shanai ru paramed buddhya dhriti grihitaya atma samstham mana kritva na kinchid api chintayet you see if the mind is wandering away constantly this happens in studies isn't it what should i do slowly gradually step by step you must bring back the wandering mind S- set your intelligence in patience and steady your mind in the self constantly bring back the mind you see i told you every time it goes if you keep bringing it back at one point it will not go so often it will not go at all it's a matter of habit so bring back atma samstham mana kritva is an important clue this is actually yoga if you keep the mind in the heart which is a yogic technique the mind will not wander that much commit your life energies to the heart center that is why ye yog mein aksar kehte hain kyunki otherwise your energies will remain dissipated if you learn to concentrate on the heart center your energies remain collected and a different dimension of intelligence opens within you aap karke dekho thoda sa concentration thoda sa meditation 5 minute ke liye aap karke dekho just now i will give you a technique and you will see indeed you can be in charge of your energies and your mind will remain subdued under your control full of awareness fully alive yet under control you see what a beautiful state that must be the thoughts you want come in the emotions you want to feel you are able to experience you are not carried away you are not under your negativities so you don't have to go into all these synthetic joys to keep you happy and delighted so putting you in charge of yourself this is what bhagavad gita is telling you this is actually the essence of the bhagavad gita elevating human life by oneself by one's own faculties training you to do it here let us practice that 5 minute meditation are you ready ha huh? thoda practical mein jaye i will teach you a 5 minute guided meditation which you can do every day just to collect your energies and learn to concentrate okay it will take just 5 minutes sit straight all of you see when you sit in your room you can uh, sit in that lotus posture which he is sitting hmm 
folding your knees. But here because the chairs are like that, I do not mind if you put your leg down. Okay, but jab room mein practice karoge, sit in that position. What happens you know when you sit in that position? Posture is very important in med meditation. If you sit erect, all your organs will come out alive. You know they will not, uh, if you droop, they will also droop. A kind of alertness will come into your mind just by posture. So, fix your posture, always keep the backbone straight. This is the first thing and not just in meditation, jab bhi concentrate karte ho, when you are just sitting, he hearing lectures, when you are working in your room, keep the backbone straight and look at its magical effect on your body and mind. And then see so certain basic things I will tell you before I start. If you just still the body, to a great extent you still the mind. Learn to still the body. If you regulate breathing, mind will be in your hands. Try it and see. If you just regulate breath. Hmm? So, now we will practice it. All of you back straight, neck straight. Only I will keep my eyes open because I have to watch you, but all of you have to keep your eyes closed. Yes, close your eyes, keep as still as possible and regulate your breath, harmonious breathing. Long drawn out breaths, just regulating breathing and posture will usher the mood of meditation. Regulate your breath and just watch your mind. You see how the thoughts have calmed down. Just posture and breathing regulated, calming effect will come on the mind. If you keep watching your thoughts, they will stop. Watch your thoughts, see how they come to a standstill. Now I will introduce the meditation. Imagine a point of light in your heart. Imagine a point of radiant light in your heart. This is the light of your awareness. You are pure awareness, ever shining, ever present of the nature of existence, pure consciousness and bliss. All knowledge is within this, all power is here. You are pure awareness, always. This is the light of awareness ever shining in your heart. Identify strongly with this point of awareness which you are. This has a name, it is called Om. We will just chant Om five times, a long drawn out Om. Just follow me.
for the next one minute you will just hear the Om going on within you. Deeply concentrate, the Om is perpetually going on. Just hear it within your heart. Feel the stillness within you. See how the mind has come to rest. You are just awareness without thoughts. This is your real state. Now, let us again bring in specific thoughts. Imagine that point of light, your awareness expand expand, expand infinitely all around you and encompass everything, your body, your mind, your thoughts, your will, the objects around you, the world around you, your awareness encompasses everything. You are in a sense one with everything. You have become one with Supreme Consciousness, which we call God. Remember, these are your real states of mind. When mind activity is not there, awareness remains over. You can expand that awareness and reach the state of pure consciousness. With this, slowly you will open your eyes. This mood of stillness you must keep up. See, after a meditation like this, whatever you think will be even more brighter your thought process will be clearer. Why? You have stopped normal thought at least for 2-3 minutes. Mm, you have decreased the volume of information in your brain, isn't it? You have not stopped thought for 2-3 minutes. We should say you stopped it maybe for a few fractions of a second, but at least you stopped the constant flow of information for some time. Just a 5 minute meditation, it has a calming effect on body and mind. Mm. So, this you can practice. When you learn the art of concentration, why do we tell you fix the mind in the heart? You know, yogically speaking, if I can use that word, you are raising vital energy to the heart by doing that because you have fixed your attention on the heart. This is an important technique. By doing that, the mind will become very clear. This kind of confusion, restlessness, unnecessary distraction, all this will not remain. Thoda try karke dekho, you know the art of concentration will just descend on you. So, do not simply struggle with unnecessary things, do not waste your youth on that, hmm? struggling with anger, struggling with uh, distractions, no. There is a glorious life in front of you, train this system properly and you can get the best out of life. So then, now we will proceed to some of the methods of good living. 
see today when when uh, you will be in leadership roles you know values are discussed everywhere nowadays okay what is the origin of values in workplaces in uh, corporates also today values are discussed isn't it value begins as virtue within you so today we are here we are going to discuss some of these basic virtues which are called divine attributes in the bhagavad gita daivi sampad why they are being called divine attributes is if you just develop them absorb them into your character you will actually exude a kind of a very commanding presence you will actually exude a very sattvic nature which will get you success everywhere huh? so th these are some of the virtues which the bhagavad gita asks us to develop if you develop virtues today tomorrow in the workplace as leaders you will command the values you want to command if these virtues do not become part of us you know that that integrity honesty transparency which is required of a leader will not come out today there is this tendency to ignore personal virtues and only focus on gimmicks at the workplace values at the workplace that alone will not work the, the your personal life should be of this type so you see the the virtues which are being told here hmm, they are at the very heart of great character it is a great character means these virtues will be present you see first he says abhayam sattva samshuddhi gnana yoga vyavasthiti danam damascha yagnascha swadhyaya stapa arjavam this is in the 16th chapter of the bhagavad gita the first three verses daivi sampad he is describing what is the first virtue he is saying abhayam a sense of fearlessness which means what i am not doing something under compulsion ability to give this abhay to others it doesn't mean just being non violent it means a non injurious nature not giving injury in any form to anybody that is giving abhay a sense of abhayam sattva samshuddhi purity of heart which means you mean what you say you do what you think is right not that thinking is one way emotion is another way and willing is some other direction not like that basic purity of heart sattva samshuddhi gnana yoga vyavasthiti an attachment towards this knowledge and yog higher knowledge and yog that is gnana yoga vyavasthiti aisa mat samjho all this is outdated knowledge abhi hum kaise use kare in all you know management studies they are bringing in this philosophy everywhere in the world in fact i find greater enthusiasm for yog vedanta outside india you know why they have understood the value of all these systems of thought so you should make it part of your life you should make it part of your thinking isiliye keh rahe hain gnana yoga vyavasthiti hi a mind which is sensitive to gyan this level of knowledge and yog hmm aisa mat samajhna that this this is not going to matter this is going to matter most in your life because if you have not trained this the objective world cannot offer you anything then danam the tendency to give be a contributor i always told you isn't it in any situation the contribution you must be the contributor you know people who have amassed a lot of wealth okay let me tell you a very wonderful incident here people who have amassed a lot of wealth after some time they only want to give out that wealth to others how much can you stack and store and hold after all what what will you do with it you know philanthropists like for example bill gates today hmm? do you know the amount of contribution he has made i have some figures here his total wealth in 2013 for a long time he has been the richest man in the world i hope you know that his total wealth in 2013 was us dollar 78.5 billion out of which 35 billion he has given out in charitable works it's the greatest capital given out for charity so far enormous and he is doing charitable work all over the world with an inner inspiration through his bill and melinda gates foundation Mm. 
and he, he kept only about uh, dollar 10 million, not billion, 10 million for his children. Each one gets 10 million and the rest he is giving out in charity. Enormous projects he, he has initiated in so many developing countries, underdeveloped countries and doing great work. Now you see this inspiration, how does it come from, where does it come? So here let me tell you also the story of John D. Rockefeller. Have you heard? Rockefeller Foundation, aapne nahi suna hai? even National Geographic Society is connected to Rockefeller Foundation. See, let me tell you this story. When Vivekananda was in uh, United States, in, he went there in 1893 for the parliament and then 1894 also he was there. That time this Rockefeller was a very rich businessman. He had given his entire life for uh, building business and making money and uh, that time he was of course not yet the, the richest man maybe, but uh, he, he had a huge fortune and a very well established man of that society, but he had no peace of mind. He was a very willful personality who was very difficult to advise and could not get well, uh, get along well with his colleagues and all that. But whatever it is, he had no peace of mind with all this wealth. So one day his friends told him, why do not you visit that yogi, Hindu yogi Vivekananda who, has, who is here and he said, no, 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 I will not go to all these people. But some impulse came after a some time and he went to meet Vivekananda. When he entered uh, the place where Vivekananda was staying, you know, he was not in his uh, living room. So, he entered the study, he actually bypassed the butler, uh, just uh, show him aside in a way and entered. And uh, he, he went into the study and Vivekananda was sitting there absorbed in a book. He had enormous power of concentration, you see. So, if he, if he would take a book, he would just be soaked up in that. So, he did not notice uh, Rockefeller's coming. And Rockefeller is such an important big man in America, such a hu huge businessman. Actually, he was the owner of Standard Oil Company that made him make such a huge fortune. And so, he came there and he saw Vivekananda and Vivekananda is sitting absorbed. So, he knocked on his table and then Vivekananda looked up and he said, uh, the first thing he said was, you know, some things about Rockefeller's life which only Rockefeller knew. He said, oh, this is, uh, these are uh, the things which I see. And Rockefeller said, who told this to you? Then Vivekananda said, nobody needs to tell this to me. My mind is able to see through other minds as one sees through a glass case. Then Vivekananda said, but your mind is restless. You are suffering from peacelessness, isn't it? Rockefeller said, yes, I have no peace of mind. I have everything in the world. Then Vivekananda said, I will tell you the secret for peace. Do not think you have enormous wealth and that you are the owner of that wealth. You are the custodian of your wealth. You are not the owner of your wealth. So, use that wealth wherever it is needed, to whoever it is needed to the poor, to the needy, to the afflicted, give out your wealth to them, bring support and help to other people, bring joy into other hearts and I will tell you peace will just unfold from within your heart. Rockefeller was not used to getting advice. Hmm. So anyway, he heard this and then he left abruptly. After a few days, again he came. He came and again he entered the living room, Vivekananda is not there, he went into the study. Again Vivekananda was sitting there absorbed in a book. Again he knocked and Vivekananda looked up and then he put a paper on the table and he said, look at this, that was a, a, a huge donation he had made to a public cause. Then Vivekananda saw the paper and uh, Rockefeller said, you can thank me for it. And Vivekananda looked up and said, it is for you to thank me. I have brought back your peace of mind. Later, in a few years after this, in 20, uh, sorry, 1913, I think, Rockefeller Foundation he created, which did enormous work. In fact, he was the Bill Gates of his time, of that era, 100, more than 100 years back. And he gave out 550 million in charity. The last four years of Rockefeller's life was entirely, he went, went out of business. He stepped out of business actually, gave it to his son and then he devoted himself entirely to philanthropic work. He 
caught the cue, the inspiration from these words and he converted his life like that and so he got rid of that restlessness which he was suffering from. So, you see in every life somewhere, sometime we will understand happiness is a state of mind. If my mind is not functioning properly, no matter what is there in my life, I will not be happy. So, I must know how to take charge of this first. And you know the connection between Rock, uh, John D. Rockefeller and Bill Gates? Bill Gates took his inspiration for philanthropy from David Rockefeller, who was the youngest son of John D. Rockefeller. So, you see the Vivekananda effect continues. So, what I am telling you is, these are all ways to attain inner stability, peace of mind. That is why Dhanam is a divine attribute. You must be a giver. In fact, see in your own system who is generating the wealth which you are going to create. And you will instantly know, you are today you have in management studies trusteeship management. Hey na? Nobody is an owner. You can at the most be a trustee of any great body of wealth. So, why? That wealth is meant to be used for social causes and you are the trustee of that wealth. So, this idea was introduced by Vivekananda in a way you can say when he said you are not the owner of your wealth, you are the custodian of your wealth. Use it for good purposes, your peace will come back to you. So, you see you can that is why I said basic virtue should be there, then there will be values in the workplace. Values arise in the social context, but virtues, virtue arises in the personal context, whether anybody is seeing or not, whether anybody knows it or not, I am what I am. I, I am basically a man of virtue. <coughs> this should come into our lives. Dhanam, Dhamascha. Dhamma is again control of the senses of the mind. Yagnyascha. Yagnya is again acknowledging the fact of the exchange, the importance of exchange in life. You are taking from life, you must be able to give back to it. Replenishing life is the principle of yajna. Swadhyaya, good amount of self-study every day on an everyday basis. Now, because you are so busy, maybe 5-10 minutes a day, thoda sa gita padna hai, not just in the holidays, hmm, on a regular basis. And then, tapa, which means a certain amount of austerity. Why tap? Kya karta hai? Tap mane hai, iska matlab yeh nahi, hum bol rahe hai, kahi chale jau, bed ke tapasya karo. Intense concentration on the work at hand is tapasya. Apply application of mind is tapasya. So, what it will do? Tap ka matlab hai, it generates heat. It, it actually takes your energies to the next higher level. So, a certain amount of austerity, just being extravagant, just being frivolous, this will not get you anywhere. Purposeful, you are already like that, otherwise you would not be here. So, develop these virtues further. Arjavam, hmm. the, actual, uh, the actual meaning of Arjavam is uprightness. Uprightness ka matlab hai, straightforwardness, honesty integrity, all these qualities, hmm? make it part of your being. Then ahimsa, abhai means being fearless, ahimsa means this ability to not injure in any way. Hmm? Satya, being devoted to truth, remember this if satya is not there, you can be no leader, basically your employees will be seeing, looking out for the integrity of your personality, is not it? So, Satya, Akrodha, remain in a uh, mature state of mind. If you only are reacting negatively with anger, with hatred towards this one, with bias, with prejudice, you cannot do anything at the workplace, is not it? Hmm? In fact, organizational failure is due to this many times. You do not know how to behave basic, basically. That is why there is a corporate culture now, you know. You must know how to talk and how to behave, basically with other people. You cannot show anger. You cannot show resistance to others' opinions. So, akrodha, tyaga, ability to give up what is, what does not matter too much. 
not sticking and uh, continuing in the same old silly grooves. Hmm? Shanti, a basic placid state of mind hmm? and you see if you are always in a restless mode, you are wasting energy. This is what they are trying to tell you. A paishunam, absence of animosity, jealousy, all this is animosity, absence of that, absence of uh, even calumny, hmm? uh, which is a tendency to talk ill of others. You see some people have that, they will ignore all the good in others and pick up some uh, minor uh, fault or something and keep exaggerating on that. So, such people go into that state only, hmm? get rid of all these uh, dirty tendencies, small tendencies these are. Then daya, a compassionate outlook. See, I am telling you, you know, for a karma yogi, this is very important. He is very sensitive to pain and suffering in others. That is why he cannot help being a karma yogi. Mm, it is a great quality, daya. Bhuteshu, uh, daya bhuteshu, for all beings, daya. Mm. And then aloluptvam, aloluptvam is usually given as uncovetousness. Uh, through control of the senses, you come to this a kind of basic contentment. Ardravam, gentleness in behavior. Hira, hri, hri is actually modesty in behavior. Modesty is not there, no respect will come. Respect is not meant to be demanded, it is meant to be commanded and it comes only through modesty. Achapalam, achapalam is uh, uh, absence of fickleness. If you are fickle, constantly changing direction as I told you, can you, can you be relied upon? You cannot be relied upon. Then Teja, Tej is great energy, you are radiant with energy as it were, hmm, strength and energy. Kshama, ability to forgive. If you keep holding the small things, wrong things about others in your head, uh, you will collapse, nothing else will happen. So, let go. Dhriti, Dhriti is fortitude, a powerful well developed will. Shaucham, Shaucham is again purity in every sense. Adroho, Adroho Nati Manita, no droha towards anyone. Hmm. And you see the Hindi may be shabd hai, isli aapko samaj mein aayye. Na Ati Manita, which means uh, absence of pride. Not that you are always wanting praise, always seeking uh, somebody's adulation, absence of pride basically, in an impersonal way you are able to work. Bhavanti, all these, Bhavanti, Sampadam, Daivim, Abhijatasya, Bharata, these are the Daivi, the great attributes of, the divine attributes of human nature, which you will see in an Abhijata person, a person who is of really that caliber will have these qualities of that kind of a glorious noble birth will have these qualities, Daivi Sampad. I told you if you develop virtue, it will translate into values in your workplace. If you are able to generate value systems in your workplace, there is no question whether you should be a leader or not. You will become a natural leader. It is the absence of this that is the cause for all our corruption, all our societal problems. We have ignored this part. You see how clear it is being said in the Bhagavad Gita. What you should cultivate, what you should develop. Madam, yes. Uh, these things are uh, telling about the Shama. Then Kshama, huh? Then why to be punished? Okay. <laughs> that is contextual question actually. Uh, you must punish according to the level of the crime, is not it? Here when they are talking of Kshama, they are talking about a natural disposition of mind which is forgiving. You see people can hold grudges for small reasons. Do not develop this kind of a silly outlook, that is what they are telling you here. You understand? Huh? Holding grudges for small things, going into negative modes of mind due to that. No, do not go get into all this. This is what they are meaning to tell you here. Hmm? So, these are all the methods of sattvic living for a successful life. A successful life is a meaningful life. Hai na? Agar meaning na ho, life mein success ho sakta hai? Think and tell me. 
successful life means meaningful life. All this brings meaning into your life. That is why it is important. So then many other things are discussed. I am not going to go into all of them, but this much I will tell you. So many things are given in the Gita, which will, which are going to point out towards your success. They are going to tell you what, what is the nature of the sattvic doer, with what sense of agentship should you function. Uh, since we are dis discussing karma yoga, all this is important to you. Then what, what constitutes the actual austerity of your speech, your mind, your life energies? These are all very important. Anudvega, karam, vakyam, very beautiful verses are there. I leave it for your homework. Practical session anyway hai aap ke liye. So, aap thoda sa pad lije ye sab. I will give you at the end of the class. You will just know what is expected of a well developed human being. Hmm. Who, what kind of quality will drive you towards leadership. Hmm. So, this is there and of course, sensitivity to these things. You see, when, when we are, when the Gita is talking about leadership. Hmm, this is a model of leadership which I have put there. Just uh, look at that slide. You see, there are types of leaders. There is a democratic leader, there is a facilitative leader, there is a dictatorial leader, there are utopian benevolent dictatorial leaders. Each one's characteristics are put there. Just notice them. Democratic leader gets input from others, institutes voting, delegates occasionally or he may not even de delegate and debates about it. Now, our ideal amongst all of these, you can look at their characteristics quickly, but I will tell you the ideal is the facilitative leader. See that he serves others, offers guidance, appreciates in inquiry and dialogue. He is participatory, he is focused on others, is not it? Compare it with the others, dictatorial leader of course you know, the utopian leader also you know. So, hmm, once you have noticed that diagram, now you will know how we can apply the virtues we have been discussing for this kind of leadership. You see, for you to be able to have this service mindset, naturally you are a karma yogi, you have a disciplined mind, you have a disciplined will, which is turned towards serving others. In order to offer guidance and not just domination, you know. Again, you require th these basic virtues which we have been discussing. In order to be able to appreciate uh, inquiry and dialogue, again, in order to be able to delegate, again, you need these certain basic things in your personality in order to be successful as a facilitative leader. So, you see the essentials, if you ask me to sum up for leadership, what does Bhagavad Gita teach you? I will say it teaches you the means to tranquility because your mind, the way it is working is very important for your decision making, very important at the workplace for in whatever you do. You see your work will be perfect only if your mind is very steady. So the means to tranquility is what Gita teaches you, buddhi yog, how you can attain to yog just by refining your intellect, taking it very high, it will lead to the state of yog. Buddhi yoga is an important concept in the Bhagavad Gita. Here we have no time to go into it in detail, but you can attain to yoga just through refining your intellect and mind control. Basics of mind control, which we discussed, art of concentration, all this is important as a leader. How to face trials and obstacles, how not to go into negativities and depression. This also we discussed, huh? what is it that is making us? Uh, go into negativities. So, how to stop that? Then the charisma of divine attributes, a leader should be able to radiate that charisma. It comes only by developing virtue at the personal level that will translate into values at the workplace. Then the nature of gunas, why this is put in under leadership is, you know there are, there are three gunas working. Aap, aap ko to abhi, abhi tak pata hua hoga. Sat, sattva, rajas and tamas. Can a tamasic person be a leader? Tell me. Jiske upar sirf tamas hai. Full of anger, hatred, egoism. Huh? You may perform very well a, your particular task because you have been trained in it. 
but you cannot remain a leader for long. That is why the nature of the basic gunas you are composed of plays a part in leadership. That is why I give you sattvic ways of living. This is essential. If a leader is tamasic, after some time either the organization falls or he will no more be the leader. This is the simple result and then it will redefine happiness for you. In Bhagavad Gita it is very beautifully put, you will attain higher and higher forms of happiness as you go on refining your system. Yam labdhva cha param labham manyate nadhikam tataha yasmin sthito na dukhe na guruna api vichalyate Bhagavad Gita says which means this is a kind of happiness, higher happiness is something you get which totally gives, gives you total contentment, you do not want anything more than that. Yam labdhva cha aparam labham manyate nadhikam tataha tasmin yasmin sthito na dukhe na guru na api vichare. It does, any kind of sorrow does not shake you anymore. You can attain these higher levels of happiness if you develop these modes of living, sattvic modes of living and of course it will show in your workplace. So this in a sense is essence of Bhagavad Gita for you as students what you can draw from the Bhagavad Gita. Let me conclude with one thing, see today's uh, corporates believe in spiritual leadership, it is, it is not a concept which is uh, utopian unless we have developed jo mai yog carry you, unless we have developed a mature mindset and we have developed certain faculties a socially oriented will for example we will not be <coughs> accepted in the workplace in leadership positions for all of you it is important to understand this basically you cannot uh, remain have leadership just by hook or by crook, it comes only when you are able to command that level of respect. Hai na? Isile spiritual leadership is a kind of leadership which transforms you. It is due to your inner transformation. It is not due to whether the majority voted you for you or not. You get the point? It is not others' opinions based on you. It, it is just the entire flowering of your personality. That brings you to a point of what we are calling spiritual leadership. Thoda sa yoga agar practice karo, this will become part and parcel of your, your own life. And this will be able to, what happens is you develop a kind of equanimity under all circumstances of life. And this has actually been described as the goal of human life. Is ka matlab hai, any kind of situation you are in, you know how to face it. You are always in a positive state you have a kind of serenity which does not change with the situations around you. So for this let me just tell you one story and I will end today's class and of course we will be concluding this course. See this story is the story of uh, Sh Shukadev, Shuka who was a knower of Brahman, a great uh, man of realization. He was actually the son of Vyas. Ved Vyas. Aapne suna hai Vyas ka naam, he was the compiler of the Puranas and all this. So just see uh, this Shuka's state of mind, I, this is what I want you to observe. It seems he was born with the knowledge of the highest, the ultimate. And so his father knew it immediately that he does not have much to teach this child because he is born with the knowledge of ultimate reality. So he sends him to Janaka, Janaka of Mithila. Uh, he was another great Brahmarishi of Vedic times. So he sends his son to Janaka. Janaka hears that this is a remarkable boy who has had the highest knowledge and that is why he is a well known Rishi of his time. So but he deliberately arranges things in such a way just to test this boy. So when Shukdev arrives in Mithila, there is nobody at the gate to welcome him. Although he is the son of Vyas who is well known, renowned all over the Bharatvarsh and he himself is a knower of Brahman, still there is uh, Janaka has not come to receive him and he is actually ignored. At the gates he is just given a seat to sit there, but you know there is absolutely no change in Shuka's face. The guards notice that this is a man, no, nothing can shake him, 
he is neither angry nor is he hateful nor is he wanting to go back, no resentments, nothing. He is blissfully sitting there. He, they, he was not even offered the bare hospitality required to be offered to a guest. Then after some time, he is ushered into the palace and there for almost a week, he is given extra hospitality, all kinds of good stuff and uh, good clothes to wear and fragrant bath and uh, good food and kept in all luxury. Again, they notice there is no change on Shuka's radiant face. Mind is so stable, unmoving sort of and blissful. Nobody can shake him out of that state. Then finally, he is ushered into Janaka's presence in the court room where he used to hold court. He is brought there and Janaka sees this young boy who is so radiant with the light of supreme knowledge and he tells him, uh, my son, here is a bowl of milk. He gives him a bowl full to the brim with milk, full to the brim, uh, almost that if he shakes it too much, it, it will fall, the milk will fall. But Janaka says, now you take this bowl of milk all around the hall seven times. I just want to see how you do it. And in that hall, there were musicians, there were, there were dance performances going on uh, because you know it uh, is a king's court mm. and all the attraction of those beautiful faces, everything is going on. And Shuka takes that bowl of milk, goes all over the hall, round the hall f seven times, not a single drop of milk falls. The hand is so steady because the mind is so steady. The mind is so steady because he has attained the state of supreme tranquility. And the, the look on his face, the bliss on his face, seeing him, the whole courtiers and everybody in the court are simply stunned. So, this is a possibility, the state of Shuka. As soon as he brings back the bowl to Janaka, Janaka tells him, I have nothing more to teach you. Your mind is not distracted by anything in this world. It is in perfect poise all the time. You will allow only what you want to come in, only that you will allow to come in. It does not, it, it is unmoving, unchanging in a state of supreme tranquility, yet exuding the highest consciousness, the highest bliss. So, I have nothing more to teach you, you have attained the highest. This is the ideal in our heritage, spiritual heritage. This is a possibility with this human mind. If it is trained through all these disciplines which we have been discussing, it can teach you to reach the highest goal of human life, which is you are doing work great work, but the mind is in a completely yogic state, in, in direct touch with reality. This is the ideal karma yogi given in our scriptures. So, with this, let me conclude our session as well as this course. Let us make it an offering at the feet of the Lord himself with a small prayer. Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu.